Professor Richard Wolf drops by to explain how capitalism failed to protect us from COVID-19. It's fascinating. Check it out. Leave your comments. Ding the bell. Share it with your friends. And subscribe to our channel. One of his websites, his Twitter handle is Prof Wolf, P-R-O-F-W-O-L-F-F. And Professor Wolf, let's let's talk this week about your book, The System Is or The Sickness Is the System When Capitalism Fails to Save It from Pandemics or Itself. How is the form of capitalism that we practice here in the United States itself problematic in in the context of trying to provide for the general welfare, the general health? Well, I think uh, to be blunt, but to be clear, it, it doesn't work. Capitalism is not a way of managing public health, and we are just now living through a horrific lesson in that truth and let me briefly explain we have in america the companies and the factories and the trained personnel who can make masks and gloves and ventilators and hospital beds everything you need we have it we also know that viruses are a part of life they've been with the human race from day one uh, we had a terrible one a hundred years ago. We really know what they can do. So we know we need to have stockpiled across the United States adequate materials like masks and so on, because we know viruses are transmitted from one mouth to the one face to another. We fail to do that. The United States, with 4.5% of the world's people, uh, has 25% of the COVID cases and deaths. What happened? Answer. It wasn't profitable for companies to produce and stockpile masks. There's no secret here, and there's nothing complicated. The reason is simple. If you produce millions of masks, then you have to store them around the country, presumably near centers of population. You have to monitor those masks in those warehouses. Do they stay clean? Do they deteriorate? If they deteriorate, they have to be replaced. If they get uh, unclean, they have to be sterilized, etc., etc. You have to monitor that, and how long do you have to wait? Well, no one knows till the next virus comes. That's a very risky proposition. It's not very profitable when you think of all the expenses and the unknown wait time. So guess what? In a capitalist system where profit is the bottom line, the companies that could have made these things didn't do it because private profit is not the way you handle uh, the problem of public health. The first demand of any economic system would have to seem to me to be to sustain the health of our people. Otherwise, the rest of it really becomes moot. It's, it's no longer relevant. And this is a system which puts profit first. And in this case, the profit dictated not to produce what the public health demanded. And the government could have stepped in and said, okay, private capitalism really uh, stinks when it comes to public health. So the government, to compensate for the failures of capitalism as an economic system, is going to come in and do it. In other words, the government will pick up the, the risk by holding this stuff in warehouses. It'll pick up the cost of those warehouses and of maintaining. It would do all of that because private capitalism fails. And we know that the government could do this. That's the worst of it because the government already does. As my book tries to make clear, it's equally unprofitable to produce a missile or a machine gun or a jet fighter or any of the other basics of our, our military uh, equipment. And so what happens is private profit would dictate to companies, don't make those things. Don't store them in expensive warehouses because nobody knows when the next war using them will come down the pike. It's like a virus, you might say. So what does the government do? It comes in and it buys the jet planes and the tanks and the machine guns as fast as they roll off the assembly line. And then at our taxpayer expense, it stores it, it stockpiles it, it maintains it. So we know the government could do it, but the government, beholden to this ideology that private profit is the magic road to everything, didn't step in uh, to do in the medical care field 
what it does as a normal matter of business in the military field. And I think it's a tragic explanation that capitalism, left to its own profit-driven decision-making, is a disaster for us. The health-wise, yeah. I just read Zeke Emanuel's book, Which Country Has the Best Healthcare? And right. he goes through, uh, you know, South Korea, Taiwan, most of the European countries. I mean, he, he goes through a whole bunch of different countries and examines how their healthcare systems are put together and where they came from. And none of them are based, are rooted in capitalism. None of them. The closest you can get to one that is not a government single-payer system is Switzerland, where everyone is required to buy health insurance, and there are you know, something like 100 health insurance companies in Switzerland, but they are all also heavily regulated and required to be not-for-profit corporations, so there's no profit motive. So I don't That's see where right. capitalism is functioning anywhere in the world in the, in the health care uh, sector, you know, in, in terms of providing health care to people except in the United States, and it's clearly not functioning here. Yes, and I think that the, that the underlying message here is, is one that American ideology, the dominant ideology in this country, refuses to face. Uh, we have to understand, we live in a society which is uh, fundamentalist in economics. And I mean that in the sense like fundamentalist in religion. It has an idea. It is the idea for them that is the absolute truth. Everything else is to be rejected. And the, tr the evangelical notion of economic fundamentalism is that the private sector is always efficient, always best, always the optimum way to go. And this is craziness, especially when it's costing us uh, 210,000, if my numbers are correct, of dead Americans uh, because this government is unable or unwilling to step in when the private profit capitalist system really messes up. And, and I'm hoping that the lesson will be learned, tragic though it may be, to have spent all of these sick people right up to our president to, to teach the lesson. But that's what the book tries to expose. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's a marvelous, uh, you lay it out brilliantly. We're talking with Professor Richard Wolff, his latest book, The System is, The Sickness is the System, When Capitalism Fails to Save Us from Pandemics or Itself. And uh, Professor Wolff, in the, in the minute or so we have left, what are your thoughts on how we transition from a, a capitalist, profit-driven healthcare system to one that resembles the rest of the developed world? I think we have to use the same basic approach that the rest of the developed world did, which is it's clear what the priority is. Public health, uh, and that's not just in terms of health care, but the quality of our food, uh, what we put in our mouths every day, uh, all of that, th those are the bottom lines. Those are the priorities. And we have an economic system that is evaluated and judged on how well it does on that priority task. And by that calculation, we should see this pandemic. The one good thing that might come out of it is, all right, we learned our lesson. Let's get a public health system of the sort that puts public health first and subordinates the private profit of a few uh, to what is necessary for the majority. From your lips to the ears of every American, <laughs> let us hope. Professor Richard Wolf, the book, The Six Sickness is the System, When Capitalism Fails to Save Us from Pandemics or Itself.